Welcome to another tutorial from Burton's Media Group. This is Dr. Brian Burton. In today's tutorial, we're going to examine how to use the Script Campus toolset to fire a projectile or a shot in a game environment. I'm going to cover the entire process. But the first thing, I've already got my ship. This is based upon the textbook on creating a space explorer type game where you've got a ship shooting asteroids as it wanders through space. So here I've got a ship. In the distance here, I've got an asteroid that's going to need to be shot. The next, the first thing that we need to do is create a child entity on our spaceship. So I've got my spaceship here. I'm going to right click on it, create a child entity. This child entity, I'm going to call it tip. Tip is where the projectiles are going to shoot from. Uh, this is so that it does not collide with the ship itself. Uh, this is standard practice inside of game development is that you need a launch point for any shots that are going to be launched inside the game environment. I'm going to place the tip location slightly in front of my ship and a little bit above so it will be easy to see when a shot is launched. I, that, that's always a good thing to be able to see inside your environment when your shots do take off. So I've got my tip, it's going to be slightly above, there's my camera, I can ship to camera view, and there you can see there's the tip. Uh, size of the tip does not matter because it's going to be an invisible entity inside the game environment, so don't worry about the size of that particular object. Later on we can adjust the location of it and make it a little bit better for our game environment. So we've got our tip, the next thing that we need to do in with the tip selected is choose spawner and just type that in and now we'll be able to spawn the projectile from the tip and it'll know where to come from so obviously the next a good thing to do would be to add the projectile to this we'll do that in just a moment let's go ahead and create our shooting script so that the input handler will properly call the spawner and we're doing that with the script canvas as I mentioned. Now in previous tutorials I have created the entire movement system as part of my ship movement. This can go inside of that script. So let's go below the other parts where we've got our input handlers. So basically all my input handlers are in one place just to keep things simple. We need to first of all include our input handler. So let's drag that into the environment and we'll zoom in on that. There's our input handler and I'm looking for the fire event. If you can't remember what we named your events, you can go back to your input handler or your input controls, open that and see all the names of your input event groups. So mine was called fire. So this will be the fire event. And then you've got the choice on whether or not you want the activation to happen when the person presses the object, when they hold the object, or when they release the object. I think I'm going to go with pressed for this, and then the, this is going to call the hand or the spawner. So this will call the spawning of from the tip. So when this is pressed, it'll call spawn. Now we do need an object for it to spawn back inside of our tip. Now that we've got the spawn in there, we need to tell it where to spawn from. By default, the spawn is going to happen, the location, XYZ location, is going to happen from the base object, which at this point is the ship. Well, that goes completely against why we created the tip on the object to launch from. To launch from a tip, you need an entity ID inside the object, and this is amazingly simple to do, but confounded me for a while until I figured out, oh, just drag it into the environment, and then you've got the start XYZ location. Oh gee, that's easy. So we now have the start location from where the object will be spawning. That takes care of the firing mechanism. The next thing that we need to do is create the projectile that will be shot from that tip through the spawner. So we'll save our ship movement and go back to our editor. So let's start by creating a new entity inside the environment that's going to be our projectile. And 
So you can see it's created an entity 11. Um, I'm going to call this bullet. You can call it anything you like, but that should work very well. So we've got our bullet. Um, the next thing that we need to do is add the physics to the object. We're going to use rigid body physics. Uh, we want it to have a collision response. We want it initially enabled. So enabled initially so that it will actually launch into the game environment call upon its physics. We can lower the density of it. 500 is really heavy for a bullet. So I'm going to drop that down to 5. And then we're going to record collisions and interact with collisions so that we can register when it does interact or collide with an object inside the game environment. So all of these except for at rest initially should be turned on. Next thing that we need to do is add a collider to this, to the bullet. While we have physics to it, we do need collision detection. And I'm just going to go with very simple primitive collider. This is going to be a sphere, so let's add the sphere component, sphere shape. There we go. Uh, we'll go with a default map for the collider. And the last thing that we might want to do to our bullet is add some rendering mesh so that you can actually see the mesh or the bullet inside the game environment. That makes it more interesting. Later on we may add a particle effect to it. But for right now, all we need is to go down to rendering and do some mesh rendering on that. Uh, we'll add a particle effect to it. I like the laser beam that I've got stored in my environment, but you can use any material inside the game environment. But I'm going to go with this laser beam because it's kind of cool. That should have our basic bullet inside the game environment. Oh, one last thing. We do need to add a script canvas to the bullet component as well. And I'm going to go ahead and link it to one that I've already created inside of script canvas, and that's called projectile. Projectile is an empty canvas. I just simply made a blank one for this particular demonstration. So empty canvas for projectile. That'll, we're going to populate that in just a minute. Okay, so we've got our bullet slice, or we've got our bullet. The next thing that we need to do is turn it into a dynamic or a, um, a slice so it's reproducible inside the game environment. So we're going to create slice, find the bullet in your entity outliner or in your game environment, right click on it and tell it to create a slice. Then it's going to want to create that slice underneath slices in your game directory. So there's creating bullet underscore zero zero one dot slice, that's fine. We'll save that and then in your asset browser under slices you'll see bullet. Open that up and there's your bullet slice and that needs to become a dynamic slice. The difference is that a dynamic slice can be called from our script canvas or from code. A regular slice can be populated inside the environment very easily in the editor but cannot be called from our script. So we need this to be a dynamic slice. Now if you go back to your tip where it asks for the spawner and asks for a dynamic slice, you can drag the bullet 001 dynamic slice into that dynamic slice slot underneath tip spawner and that completes a big part of it. Now whenever we, well actually let's try that. In theory at this point I've got an error. Okay I found my error. Um, I forgot to put the mesh asset and it's part of the mesh rendering so just simply go with the default static mesh on this that'll work just fine so okay. Default then our laser beam and now we should be ready to launch so on. There you can see the original shot that we left on the screen out there in the environment and if I hit the fire button we're getting some enormous shots added to the environment. Of course right now it has no physics applied to it to launch it or no velocity applied to it to launch it into space 
So it's just simply rolling around based upon the um, invisible terrain that's currently in my game environment. So we'll go back to our environment. Um, make sure that when you app update your mesh asset to the shot itself that you right click on the bullet and tell it to save the slice overrides and it will ask you to select those overrides then to be updated. That will automatically uh, propagate. Once it's saved to the slice you should be good for your dynamic slice but if you're concerned about that you can unset it and set it again. Do make sure that the dynamic slice is still associated with the tip for our spawner. And yes it is, but to double check you can always drag it back over there and ready to go. Okay, so we're, we're putting bullets into the environment. We've got our dynamic slice set up. All that's really left for us to do is finish the projectile slice or the projectile script canvas inside the game environment so that it will launch into space. To do that we need to start with an on graph start and that basically says when this object is instated we need to do this particular script. Next thing we need to do is get what is the forward facing direction of the tip or the ship. So we'll do that with a get world transform. So from our on graph start to our transform. We'll make those real close together here because we got a lot more to add to this. We need to get know the forward direction for the get world transform that's stored in column one of the data and that's the index one make sure you copy your transform and your in so that'll get the information coming in now we need to take that information and we need to multiply it and this is going to be a vector three multiplication we're going to multiply let's put a thousand and then our out and in Okay, so that will put, give us a number to force upon the object. Uh, remember to slide your canvas around inside the environment. You can use the right mouse button and that'll drag it. The next thing that we need to do is set a velocity or apply force to the bullet. So that'll pass the vector in and our out. There we go. Now we've got force applied to it. The last thing we want to do is, after the bullet's been in the environment for so long, we want to delete the, the bullet from the environment. We don't want it to continue to exist inside the environment for the entire gameplay. That's a lot of extra work on our game engine. So let's add a delay. And how much time we want it to be, let's make that about three seconds. This is registered in seconds. And then after that delay is finished, we would like it to destroy the dynamic object. And as you can see, we've got a number of ways of destroying objects. We're going to destroy dynamic slice. And in. So this will delay for three seconds and then destroy the object. And I'm going to scroll out just a little bit so you can see the entire path. Actually, let's do this. There we go. There's the entire process for our projectile. I'm going to save. And let's give that a try. Play. And there, well, there our shot took off like crazy there. So now we can shoot. Let's see if I can line up with my asteroid there that's in the distance. And yes, we can shoot it into space now. Um, I still have gravity enabled on inside this environment, so things do eventually fall to a uh, terrain environment. But these will, the shots do eventually disappear after their three seconds. We've got complete success. We've got a lot more tutorials coming. Also, check out our books on our website. The link to the books on how to develop games in Lumberyard are in the description information below.